The Game Boy Advance family of consoles has gone through several variations, starting with the original, which then evolved to the backlit SP version, and of course, the adorable Micro. However, I think one of the best versions of the console is one that Nintendo didn't even design, and that is the Game Boy Macro. The repurposing of a Nintendo DS Lite produces the thinnest, sleekest Game Boy Advance console. So with that, sit back, relax, and join me as we revisit the Game Boy Macro console. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. In today's episode, we're gonna revisit the Game Boy Macro. So as some of you may already know, uh, I actually already did a video on the Game Boy Macro and it was my first video on this YouTube channel. So you may be asking yourself, why am I doing another video on this modification? And, and really the answer is that the original video that I did on the Game Boy Macro was really more for, I guess you could say, entertainment purposes. It really wasn't an in-depth tutorial on how to do the modification. And that's really what I sort of plan to accomplish with this video, is show you guys a more in-depth how-to on performing the Game Boy Macro mod on your Nintendo DS Lite using the BoxyPixel aluminum faceplate. So if you're interested in seeing that first video, uh, there's a link at the top of your screen to go ahead and watch it. Again, it's more for entertainment purposes and really doesn't provide detailed instruction on how to do the modification. So another reason that I wanna do this uh, video is because I actually, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Game Boy Macro mod. It's probably uh, one of my favorite form factors for Game Boy Advance consoles. And uh, actually we're gonna do some pretty neat things with this one that's different from the original video. And, uh, and I'll kind of go over that as I go over all the parts that you'll need for uh, this modification. So with that, let's go over the parts you'll need to perform this mod, starting with this one. Uh, this is the BoxyPixel aluminum faceplate, uh, which allows you to do the Game Boy Macro mod. This is arguably the most important component other than the Nintendo DS Lite uh, in order to complete the mod. And, uh, now, and this one is unique because it's, it's actually anodized blue, which um, if you remember in my original video, that was actually just a clear anodized layer and it just kind of had a metallic look, but this one is, is really nice. Um, it has a really great blue finish and I'm actually really, really excited to see how this turns out. Again, um, this is the BoxyPixel aluminum faceplate. I'll have a link to it in the description below. So if you do want to do your own Game Boy Macro mod, you can go ahead and purchase one of these. All right. So, and as with all BoxyPixel kits, uh, this comes with its own M2 machine screws uh, that you'll need to do the modification. And that's really one of the great things about BoxyPixel kits is that uh, all these screws are the same, so you don't have to worry about sorting screws based on size and thread pitch and all, and all that other stuff. And uh, it really simplifies the modification process. So uh, yeah, that comes with your aluminum faceplate. So the next uh, item that you'll need is uh, very important and um, it's actually quite small. You probably really can't see it here, but uh, I'll, I'll show some B-roll of this, of this component. This is a 330 ohm resistor and the, uh, this is again a very important component of the modification because what it does is it essentially fools the system, the Nintendo DS Lite, into thinking it still has its top screen. Um, all right, so uh, the next item that you'll need is a, a very thin uh, speaker. And uh, BoxyPixel used to sell these on his website. Uh, however, they've been sold out for a while. So, but what you can do is you can actually source this yourself. This right here is actually a Nintendo Switch uh, speaker. And this is actually one of the speakers that uh, BoxyPixel recommends uh, you use because it'll fit into the aluminum front shell housing. And again, I actually sourced this uh, particular speaker from eBay. Now this, uh, now this next item is optional. You don't need to purchase this, but uh, I actually didn't do this in my original Game Boy Macro mod. So this is gonna be a pretty neat addition 
and and this is the the Game Boy Macro glass screen lens, and 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 this is a really cool item because it essentially what you do is you remove the digitizer on the lower LCD and and basically it gives you a, a much clearer picture because that digitizer is plastic and a lot of the times with these older Nintendo DS lights that digitizer is very scratched so having a fresh uh, glass screen lens is something that's very nice and um, I do I do look forward to seeing how that looks and again, with the glass screen lens, Boxy Pixel includes uh, two 3D printed brackets. And what this does is you just basically glue this into the inside of your Boxy Pixel aluminum uh, front shell housing, or sorry, your faceplate. And this helps position the glass screen lens properly in in the uh, in the faceplate. And of course, the the other really great feature is it actually says Game Boy Macro right there on the screen, so it it just sort of makes it. A more refined package and uh, a really nice looking modification. So uh, glass screen lens, something else you may want to consider. I'll put a link to all these components in the description below. All right, so those are all the components you'll need to do this mod and um, I'm also going to list here all the tools that you're going to need. And all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this mod. Okay, to get started, we're gonna set aside the Nintendo DS Lite. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the uh, Game Boy Macro faceplate by installing these 3D printed spacers, which do hold the LCD in the proper uh, orientation and allows you to install the glass screen lens later on. So go ahead and hot glue that onto the faceplate as shown right here. And do take note of the thin segment uh, right there on the bottom and you can see how the 3D printed bracket is supposed to be oriented. All right, so next we're gonna fill in the LED indicator hole, uh, which is right there. And uh, we're gonna basically use some capped on tape to make sure no glue protrudes to the other end when we do put glue uh, in there and peel off the capped on tape and you'll see we have a nice little um, light pipe. So that looks good. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna disassemble the Nintendo DS Lite by starting off removing the three tri-wing screws and then the one Phillips uh, screw securing the battery door. And then we'll remove the battery door and remove the remaining three screws, two of which are a Phillips and one is a tri-wing. And now we're gonna have to remove these um, rubber covers and remove the two Phillips screws below them. And now we should be able to remove the rear shell housing from the console Go ahead and set that aside and uh, we'll remove the uh, L and R triggers and I try to get them out all in one piece with all with the spring and the uh, the rod in there just so you know it's easier to install later on and now we're gonna remove uh, this little daughter board here uh, but first we'll remove the antennas there's two of them so go ahead and remove those from the motherboard and now we can go ahead and remove the module. And there's a little bit of sticky tape uh, holding it on, but you just gotta use a little bit of pressure to pull it off. And here it is. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the one remaining Phillips screw holding the motherboard in. And from there, we should be able to lift the motherboard out with the LCD screen. Uh, be careful not to yank the board out because we do need to remove the single ribbon cable that connects the top and the bottom uh, console together. And then uh, fish the antenna from below the cartridge slot like so. 
and now we have fully separated the motherboard from the rest of the Nintendo DS Lite console. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the uh, digitizer ribbon cable from the motherboard. And then we're gonna cut away the connector that uh, we just actually re removed the ribbon cable from. And I'll be using my flush cutters for this. And unfortunately I didn't have the close-up angle because I forgot to press record on my other camera. So this is the best view I have of me removing that connector. And now we're gonna remove the ribbon cable to disconnect the LCD from the motherboard. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-tin all the appropriate solder pads on the motherboard, starting with the ground for the speaker. And we're gonna solder to the left uh, speaker test pad, but you can also do it to the right one as well, and both are highlighted. It really makes no difference. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna solder the ground wire for the speaker first. And we're gonna hold off on soldering the other wire because first we're gonna pre-tin the test pads for the 330 ohm resistor. And that is LED A2 and LED C2. And we're gonna basically bridge that, those two test pads with the 330 ohm resistor. All right, once we have solder on those two test pads, we can go ahead and put the 330 ohm resistor in place and just get it kind of oriented in between the two points. Um, and, and really all you're gonna do is heat up the test pad and really the solder should just move the uh, 330 ohm resistor in place. Just like so. And now we're gonna solder the other uh, speaker wire. And we're done with soldering. So this is probably the hardest part is done. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the digitizer from the LCD screen because we are gonna install the glass screen lens from BoxyPixel. So there I just removed the bezel first, but really you can remove the bezel and the digitizer as one piece. And this is how you basically remove the digitizer. We're just peeling it off from the LCD uh, by getting my craft knife there to, to get the separation started. And, um, and really it comes off quite easily. So, but, to, but do be careful because the LCD is a fragile component. And here we have the digitizer itself. All right, and I put some Kapton tape to hold the wires in place and also to cover the 330 ohm resistor just so we don't create any shorts. All right, next we're gonna install the LCD ribbon cable. Now be sure the LCD ribbon cable is properly seated into the connector because I actually didn't do that and the console wouldn't turn on and I had to troubleshoot it for a while, but the, um, but eventually what the problem was is that the LCD wasn't properly seated in the connector. So now we're gonna put the buttons in the front shell housing and get it prepped to install the motherboard and LCD. All right, so with all the buttons put in, let's go ahead and place the LCD and the motherboard into the front shell housing and you'll see that the two pink 3D printed brackets are holding the LCD in the proper orientation. And make sure the speaker and the wires don't get in the way of the L trigger, so make sure it's all nicely tucked under the motherboard. 
And then go ahead and grab your screws that came with the BoxyPixel front aluminum shell housing. So go ahead and secure the two screws that hold the motherboard to the front shell. Make sure all the buttons feel good before we continue. Everything looks good. And go ahead and install the module into the motherboard. Make sure it's secure. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the LNR triggers. Now these are a little bit tricky to put in, but uh, with a little bit of patience, you'll be able to get them in there just fine. And then once they're installed, just give them a couple presses to make sure they're actuating correctly. Okay, we're ready to put the rear shell on. Make sure the volume switch and the power switch are oriented in alignment with the shell because those are very delicate components and you don't wanna break those because it's a real pain to desolder those and put in new ones. So make sure the volume slider and the power slider are aligned with the rear shell housing. And go ahead and secure the seven Phillips head screws in order to attach the rear shell housing to the front. go ahead and put the battery in so we can give it a real quick test. All right, fantastic. Everything seems to be working. All right, so go ahead and put the battery door on and secure it with the Phillips screw. And go ahead and install the two rubber covers. And before we install the glass screen lens, make sure the LCD is clean and free of any dust. All right, we're all done and it just looks fantastic. All right, so we completed the modification and uh, I think it came out really well. Uh, I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. I think the blue looks incredible. And uh, I don't know how I feel about the, the baby blue and the sort of uh, royal blue combination. Uh, I think it looks pretty good um, for the most part. And uh, the one thing I really do like is, is the glass screen lens. I think that really makes a big difference. And for comparison, I have the uh, sort of the previous one I modded, which actually doesn't have the glass screen lens. So you can sort of see the difference. And um, so right there, you can kind of see the digitizer versus the glass screen lens. And one of the really nice things about uh, the custom uh, glass screen lens is that it sort of uh, reduces the size of the screen because when you do play a Game Boy Advance game on the Nintendo DS Lite or the Game Boy Macro, it's actually a, a kind of a windowed picture. And that's because of the pixel density of the Nintendo DS Lite screen. So what BoxyPixel did with this glass screen lens is the sort of border around the lens is actually reduced, there, um, thereby making the windowed appearance uh, not, not as great. So yeah, that's really the only difference between the two mods I did before is the glass screen lens and, and the fact that this is anodized blue as opposed to the clear anodization of the first one I did. But uh, I think the results look fantastic. Now there's actually a lesson learned when I was doing this modification. I, I didn't show footage of this, but uh, my first attempt at doing it after I you know basically put the whole thing back together, it wouldn't turn on. I would get a little green uh, indica indicator light that would turn on just for a split second and then it would turn right off. And what I thought happened was potentially I could have uh, created a short with one of my solder joints and uh, specifically the, the 330 ohm resistor 
the two pads that I was bridging with the resistor was actually very, very close to the pad for the, for the speaker. So I thought maybe uh, some solder was being bridged onto the two different pads and it was causing a short and maybe making the console not turn on. So I, what I actually did was, is I moved the speaker from, originally I had it on the left speaker pad. I moved it to the right speaker pad, which is actually a little bit further away from where the resistor is located. So, so I did that, I put it back together and I still had the same issue. So at that point, um, I really had no idea what was going on. So I just sort of retraced my steps. I went through the entire mod again, step by step, to just sort of see what I was doing and uh, making sure I was doing everything correctly. And lo and behold, what the issue ended up being was the ribbon cable for the LCD wasn't all the way properly seated into the connector on the motherboard. When I first did this mod originally, I, re I thought I recalled the ribbon cable just kind of sliding in uh, with, with zero resistance. So it just kind of went in and then I would clip it uh, closed. But, uh, but that's actually not the case. You actually have to sort of apply a little bit of force to sort of properly seat the ribbon cable in the connector and then you, you lock it in place. So I was just, uh, I was really scared for a second because I thought maybe, you know, I had done something else and maybe I created a short and maybe it blew a fuse and I don't have any, um, any fuses uh, in stock. So that would have really delayed the video. But fortunately, it was something as simple as plugging in the LCD ribbon cable correctly. So hopefully that uh, helps you guys out in case, you know, uh, you guys are doing this mod and for whatever reason your Nintendo DS Lite is not turning on, uh, be sure to check that LCD ribbon cable. So yeah, um, great mod. I, this is probably one of my favorite form factors uh, of, the, of the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. Uh, and you know, here I have just uh, a couple of the other ones, you know, these I sort of did recently, these mods. You saw this is the IPS Game Boy Advance SP. This is the all metal original Game Boy Advance, and then this is my uh, Game Boy Macro, which I haven't really uh, featured on the channel yet. But uh, it's just amazing how thin this form factor is. It's actually uh, just a little bit thinner than the than the Micro. So obviously it has a larger footprint, but that's good for, you know, if you have big hands, um, kind of like me or really any adult, um, it just kind of really works out quite well. And it's not as thick as the uh, original Game Boy Advance. Um, but yeah, no, I just think out of really all of the uh, form factors, I think this is probably my favorite. You do lose a little bit of screen real estate. It is a little bit smaller than the uh, AGS 101, uh, definitely the IPS, but it is larger obviously than the micro, but it's sort of a good compromise um, between all of them. And I just love how thin it is. It can just fit right in your pocket and it's very thin and sleek. And with the glass screen lens, the, the screen just looks uh, amazing. So, so yeah, great mod. Um, in terms of cost to do this modification, put these aside. Uh, I took some notes here. So to do this mod, the, the actual aluminum uh, face plate from Boxy Pixel is going to cost you about $49. And, and it's actually on, on sale right now. I was just looking on the website. So it's $49. You can get this in the blue, which I have right here. The clear, which is this one, it's basically, it looks like uh, a metallic color. You can get it in red and, and black. So really nice color options. The anodization uh, is very nice. And obviously the design is, is bar none the best in terms if you want to do the Game Boy Macro. There is really, in my book, no other way to do it. And uh, okay, and then that brings me to the glass screen lens. The glass screen lens is going to cost you about $9. And um, which, you know, it's a fair price. You don't need it, obviously. I don't have it on the top one and it still looks really, really nice. But if you do want to add that bit of refinement um, with the, you know, it says Game Boy Macro uh, right there on the bottom, and you do get a little bit of the border taken away with the, um, with the frame of the lens, 
and I, I just think it, it makes it into a really nice package if you get the, uh, the glass screen lens. And uh, the other components you'll need is the 330 ohm resistor. Now that you can't actually buy it on the BoxyPixel website. You used to be able to, but he's out of stock currently. You can basically pick something like that up from a website such as Mauser or uh, DigiKey. And those are uh, electronic components websites. And then the last thing you'll need is the speaker. And uh, like I said before, the, the speaker I bought uh, for this one uh, came from a Nintendo Switch. So if you just go to eBay or maybe even, even AliExpress, you can uh, search for Nintendo Switch speaker. Uh, I, mine came with two, the left and the right speaker. I just used one for this mod. Uh, BoxyPixel did also used to sell that on his website, but it's also no longer available. He doesn't carry it. So yeah, it's still easy to source. Like I said, just go to eBay or AliExpress. And, and, that, and that's gonna cost you probably about five bucks. So all in all, you're looking about 50 plus almost 10 for the glass screen lens. That's 60 plus a, you know, a few dollars for the resistor, let's say $2. Um, and then lastly, the speaker is gonna be like another few bucks, like $5. So you're looking about you know, 67 uh, to $70 um, in that range to do this modification. And of course, that's uh, if you do have the Nintendo DSLA console already. If you don't, you're gonna have to source uh, one of those for yourself, but you can actually get a pretty good price on, on those. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, this is the Game Boy Macro Mod. Again, one of my favorite form factors for the Game Boy Advance. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll, I'll try and answer it for you. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm releasing videos every Thursday and I got a lot of good ones coming up uh, in the near future. So do stay tuned. And as always, we'll see you next time. Thank you.